Hi, welcome to my guppy breeding channel. This is where I upload the progress of my guppies and talk about their genetics. My first breeding goal is to try to fix a solid white color characteristic that breeds true in our guppies. In this video, I'll be updating y'all on the progress of cross number six, which has a lot of variety because of several genes that are at play. Some of them even have the white colors that we are pursuing. I'll go over the genes that I think are involved, but most of the genes will be a review of the genes we've discussed in the previous two videos, apart from the half-black trait. If you are new here, my name is Ivan. I am currently documenting the progress of breeding an initial group of five guppies that didn't share many physical characteristics. We are in the middle of a series of back crosses with Gandalf, who is our white male, and we are beginning to see a small percentage of the resultant offspring expressing the white color that Gandalf has. If you haven't seen the previous videos, I highly encourage you to do so. They lay the foundation of how some of our genes are inherited and the evidence to support what genotype our guppies have. Crosses 1 and 6 will be the most relevant for this video. I initially introduced cross 6 alongside cross 7 because their mothers are sisters from cross 1. The difference is that the mothers of cross 6 have the half-black trait, whereas their sisters don't. I've labeled the mothers to cross 6, C1A, and the mothers to cross 7, C1B. Let's jump right into it. Cross 6 is expected to produce a large variety of different colored males, and females to a lesser degree. We started seeing this in the previous video on cross 6, and since then, the total number of males developing more color has increased. The reason we are seeing so many different varieties has to do with the five different genes that are at play. These are the magenta, Storzbach, European blau, base body color, and nigricotitis 1 genes. There are more genes involved, but we will only focus on these five. We've already done a lot of the groundwork with these genes, and in the interest of avoiding making this video too long, I'll link the relevant videos as cards in the corner of the frame. I will also talk about the potential offspring of cross 6 through the lens of probabilities we can achieve our goal for an all-white characteristic with a blonde-based body. Each time a new gene is introduced, our chances get lower, and this is what makes genetics and selective breeding challenging at times. But with careful breeding and record keeping, we can start understanding the trends and then use it to our advantage to make informed decisions for future crosses. If you are interested in seeing the results of this cross rather than the genetics, I get it, and I added a timestamp for you to follow on the bottom corner and in the description. Alright, here we go. I'll preface first by saying that I am not a geneticist, but I find guppy genetics very interesting and I really enjoy learning about inheritance patterns. I'll start with the first three genes, magenta, Storzbach, and European blau. The way that these genes are expected to express in the offspring of cross six is like cross five. I went into much more genetic detail when discussing the cross five offspring, and a card should pop up in the corner of this video that will take you there. Not being familiar with the genetics of cross 5 will lead to some confusion because I will not go to that level of detail here. We will instead use the information we gained from our previous videos to determine the genotypes of our C1A females. For magenta, Storzbach, and European blau, we can safely assume that C1A females are heterozygous for them. Because magenta is dominant, we can also ignore this gene like we did for cross 5 and cross 7. So, this gives our C1A females the following genotype. Uppercase S, lowercase s, and uppercase R, lowercase r, for Storzbach and European Blau, respectively, which are both recessive genes. With just two genes, this gives us four different potential color variants in our offspring. I have the four shown graphically, and we do see this in cross 5. My goal is the all-white phenotype, which I'm highlighting here. If both parents are blonde-based, and if only these two genes are considered, my chances are that one in four of their fry will be all-white with a blonde-based body color. A 25% chance is not that bad. Let's say that an average brood size is 48. That means that 12 of the fish should have the all-white phenotype. Males really show this color off, and of the 12, 
six should be males. A little on the low end, but this is still a workable number for a single brood. But the thing is, C1A females are not blonde-based. Our females are gray-based guppies. I talked about this gene a lot in most of my earlier videos. Also, much like the sisters to our C1A females, they are heterozygous gray-based and carry an allele for blonde-based body color. The last update video on CROSS7 went over the implication of adding this gene together with Storzbach and European Blau. I'm linking that video to the card in the upper corner. These three genes together means that so far, the genotype for our C1A females is uppercase B, lowercase b, uppercase S, lowercase s, and uppercase R, lowercase r. Exactly like the C1B females. Let's consider the base body color alone for a second. Backcrossing C1A females to Gandalf should result in 50% of their fry to be either gray-based or blonde-based. But we have Storzbach and European Blau to deal with. To satisfy the 50% split of the gray and blonde-based guppies, the four phenotypes that I showed earlier need to have gray-based counterparts. So, by backcrossing our heterozygous C1A females to our homozygous Gandalf, we should expect eight potential color varieties, double compared to just considering our first two genes. Our chances for this all-white phenotype with a blonde-based body just dropped from 1 in 4 to 1 in 8. That's 12.5% of the total brood. If we continue using our average brood size of 48, this means that only six of the guppies will have the all-white phenotype and only three of these will be male. This is a significant drop from earlier. With such a low percentage, there is a chance that a brood may not have guppies of this phenotype at all, and we would have to wait for the next brood drop. If we want at least six males of the same phenotype to choose from when we pick breeders for a subsequent cross, we would need a brood size that has at least 96 fry. But we are not done yet. Our C1A females have one more gene at play which will double the different color possibilities we might see. This is the Nigrocotitus 1 gene. We are working under the assumption that this gene is responsible for the half-black characteristic in our guppies. It is a dominant, sex-linked gene on the X chromosome. Again, just like our females that came from cross 4, C1A females are also heterozygous for it. Our updated genotype for C1A females now looks like this. Uppercase B, lowercase b, uppercase S, lowercase s, uppercase R, lowercase r, and X, uppercase Ni1, X, lowercase Ni1. The half-black gene is a little more complicated than the other three autosomal genes. And in the video linked in the corner, I go through what to expect in the offspring when crossing a heterozygous half-black female to Gandalf. The short of it is that 50% of the offspring are expected to express the half-black characteristic. This will still be true in cross six. We will have all the eight possibilities that I showed you earlier, but now they all have a half-black version too. This brings it up to potentially 16 different color varieties. It's honestly kind of overwhelming. My graphics poorly reflect the realistic colors that the guppies will have, but they are there to just emphasize the genes. We probably won't be able to categorize some of the guppies and that is honestly okay. So what does this say about the chances of an all-white phenotype on a blonde-based body? Very low, with a 1 in 16 shot. We can expect 6.25% of the brood in cross 6 to have the all-white phenotype. Using the 48 average brood size, that's a total of just 3 guppies expressing our phenotype, with only 1 or 2 of them being male. So, if we actually want 6 males with this phenotype out of this brood, we need a total brood size that is at least 192. This is why it is challenging to work with multiple genes. In our case, each new gene reduces our chances of getting what we want by two. To achieve our goal of a line of guppies that breeds 100% true for the white phenotype, the guppies we select for in the future need to be homozygous recessive for these genes rather than heterozygous. I want to focus on the bottom row for a bit. 
This row shows guppies that have the whitest color, but each one is slightly different. I'm particularly interested in seeing how the half black expression impacts the white color on a blonde based guppy. These will all be cool looking guppies. Bravo if you've gotten this far. This cross and cross 9 are genetically the most complicated of the bunch. But if a lot of it didn't make sense or was confusing, the main takeaway is that we can expect a lot of different color combinations in cross 6. Amid all the combinations, there should be a very small group that shows the all white characteristic that Gandalf has, plus some white colored oddballs too. Let's talk about these resultant male offspring. So far, out of the nearly 20 separated males, one or two of them look like they will express the all white phenotype. It might be a little early to make this call because they are still developing their full colors and look more transparent than white. This is a similar trend that I saw with the males in cross 5, so it does look promising. This is great, and it tells us that we are on the right track. There might also be more on the way because I still have a large amount of fry that are still too young to show much color. Look at these almost cream colored guppies. I'm pretty sure that these males have the half black characteristic on a blonde based body. The fact that they have mostly white on the bodies and tails suggests that they are at least expressing European blau, which probably also makes the black of the half black trait opaquer. They also have hints of blue, which undoubtedly came from their grandmother who we've called female number one. Speaking of blue, a portion of the males have quite a bit of a blue tint, especially those that are gray based. So let's focus on some of the gray based males. I think that these ones are the same as the cream colored males, but with that gray based body. It seems like there are two variants of these. Ones that have more of a yellow saddle and ones that don't. I think that this might be the difference between Storsbach non-expressing and expressing respectively. Storsbach expression seems to take a while to get to full effect, so I am interested in seeing if these guppies will start looking more metallic over time. It looks like I have one gray based all white male who does look more metallic. He also has some of the black patches on the top and bottom of his tail. This is very similar to what we saw in some of the offspring in cross 7. Speaking of these patterns, there's one blonde based male that has patterns that look like his uncle's who is gray based. Other than that, I can't tell what genes he is expressing or carrying. He is an outlier who doesn't fit into any of the predicted patterns we laid out. He's kind of a mystery for now. The last set of males that I'll touch on are the ones with red tails. I'm pretty sure that any guppy with a red tail does not express the European blau gene. I have both gray based and blonde based ones. There's also a good mix between half black carrying males too. I'm really enjoying the appearance of this blonde based half black red tailed male. The half black isn't as muted compared to the males where the red coloring is absent. Let me know what y'all think. Here's a shot of the males feeding to give you a good look at them all at once. In any case, for any future crosses, I'll only be focusing on the guppies with the all white phenotype. Here is a shot of the females and fry tank. There's less color here and I expect I will have a harder time picking out the ones that express the white phenotype compared to their all white brothers. I will circle back and give you an update on this cross when more of the guppies have matured. But one thing is for sure, when more genes are involved, the chances of seeing a guppy with the characteristics we are after drops significantly, making the project more difficult. We are seeing this play out in this cross, and I expect the same will be true in cross 9. However, despite the low odds, we are still managing to see some males begin to show a similar phenotype that Gandalf has. If this is something that you find interesting, please consider taking a gamble and sticking around. I have more crosses to go over and we will soon begin a new set of crosses. Here are some short update clips of the other crosses. The focus of the next video will be on cross number 8, which has produced a good amount of fry and they are slowly growing. This will be a relatively short update video since the genetics will be like cross 7 and the fry are a little too young to show any color. Cross number 9 didn't produce any fry yet, which is odd to me. I'll probably add Gandalf back into their tank at this point. Cross 5 is doing well and continuing to mature. 
some of the females are actually showing more distinguishing color. And this is good because it will help me separate them for future crosses. Cross 7 is slowly growing, and a new batch of fry was dropped on March 23rd. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.